Malaysia is regarded as one of the leading nations in semiconductor manufacturing. The Southeast Asian nation alone is reported to produce over 29.4 billion semiconductors in 2021, which in turn helps contribute to the massive $102 billion electrical and electronic industry of the economy. Such an industry has grown massively after many government initiatives and billions upon billions of dollars worth of foreign direct investments. These foreign investments, however, were largely a key to the overall growth of semiconductor manufacturing in Malaysia. And amongst the many factors that led them to outsource in Malaysia was because of one factor, robust human capital. It is simply due to this, but of course, other reasons as well, that Malaysia now stands as one of the most attractive countries for semiconductor foreign investments. And amongst the many major foreign firms operating in Malaysia, one company also stands out. A company that was one of the first ever investments made by a foreign semiconductor firm and arguably stands among the largest foreign investors ever made to Malaysia. This company goes by the name of Intel, also known as one of the world's largest companies and an American giant famous for its background in helping create Silicon Valley and the invention of many advanced chips. Intel, however, is not only viewed as a leading figure in the Southeast Asian country. Its executives also view Malaysia as a very important country for its overall value chain. The latest waves of investment made should even stand as a testament to how important Malaysia has become to its company. In 2022, Intel announced a whopping 7.1 billion semiconductor packaging plant in Penang, arguably one of the largest ever made in Malaysia, and one of Intel's most important investments investment decisions made in 2022. These investments continue to reshape the entire industrial landscape of Malaysia, and it too helps out other major investors to choose Malaysia above other countries. These other so-called investments in recent times are the likes of Germany-based Infineon Technologies, which announced a $2.6 billion fabrication facility, and Japan-based Rom, which announced its own $215 million electronic component plant. The importance of Intel, in simpler terms, is very big for Malaysia. So why did the American semiconductor giant even choose Malaysia above all other countries out there? After all, there have been arguably far better options all around the world. So why is Malaysia so special? Well, to understand all of these, we must first go back to the very beginning. Around the 1970s, the Malaysian government sought to revolutionize its economy by attracting investments one particular sector of which was the electrical and electronic industry, an industry that they hoped to help reduce unemployment. They did this by implementing business-friendly government initiatives. And as a start, it made some attraction overseas, which eventually helped push some Intel executives to look toward the Southeast Asian country. Intel itself was also at a cruising moment where they have been aggressively looking to expand overseas in order to cut down on its underlying business costs and to grasp the opportunity around Asia. Two entities with the same purpose aligned, and thus, throughout the 1970s decade, they entered Malaysia, which happened exactly in 1972 when Intel launched its first international semiconductor assembly facility in Penang, and thus paving the way for many other investments by Intel across the region. Then Intel Chief Executive Officer Andrew Grove even went to Malaysia himself, and after choosing the location, he had considered the location for its ideal location, workforce, and even its local government. Its initial investment was just a small $1.6 million facility that employed around 100 people, but eventually, these small-time investments would grow to billions of billions of dollars in the coming decades. But in the next three years, by 1975, the Penang facility would eventually immediately grow, equipped with over 1,000 workers and becoming a crucial manufacturing value chain of Intel. And after another three years go by, in 1978, success after success was established in Malaysia and was able to cater to the demand for Intel products, which eventually helped pave the way for the importance of Southeast Asia as a base of operations. The president of Intel, known as Gordon Moore, inaugurated yet another Penang facility, further increasing their investments in the country. And by the 1980s, the Southeast Asian nation, far from the lands of the United States, had immediately, just after a decade, become an attractive destination for overseas expansion. 
Such attractiveness led companies such as AMD, Osram, and Texas Instruments to follow the trend. Today, Intel and its neighboring electronic manufacturers have found not just a country for overseas expansion, but also as one of its regional hubs, a hub for research and development, a hub for fabrication, and a hub for both low- and high-value work. And Intel's presence in Malaysia has become so huge to the point that its Penang campus now has over 10 buildings. Their latest and arguably largest investment made recently was the 30 billion Malaysian ringgit, or 7.1 one billion US dollars, one that has been reported to employ over 4,000 Intel jobs and more than 5,000 construction jobs. Do take note that this direct benefit does not even include indirect effects, which are also going to be huge. The reason for its consistent investments was that Intel stated that, quote, they hold a strong government partnership with the country, diverse talent pool, well-established infrastructures, and a robust supply chain, end quote. These, as mentioned, are what keep Intel coming back for more investments, and might as well be other major investments in the country. Looking forward to the future of Intel's operations in Malaysia, the country's own electronic space is still arguably at the beginning. One can say that it has already reached its peak. Malaysia already holds, after all, around a tenth of the semiconductor global trade of chip assembly, valued at over $20 billion. However, the fact is, there is just too much opportunity out there for them to take, not just as a tug of war in demand for their products, but as the entire semiconductor industry is still growing. Even the investment made by Intel in 2022 was reported to be due to a global semiconductor shortage. A shortage happened because of weak production, as in the case led by COVID-19, but also because there was a strong demand. This simply means that the $7 billion investment was made because they too are expecting demand for chips to grow further into the future. Semiconductor, after all, is becoming more important than ever. Secondly, the Malaysian Semiconductor Industry Association has even projected that the entire semiconductor industry of Malaysia will grow between 8 to 10% by the end of 2022. And during the last 12 months, it was also reported by the same association that over 52 billion Malaysian ringgit of investments were announced targeted to semiconductors, which created over 11,000 jobs. Understanding just how massive and consistent these investments are is simply telling us that these investments will easily grow in the coming decades. And Malaysia, as an important electronic and semiconductor destination, will still stay. Finally, we should also understand how important the government of Malaysia is to the entire industry. The single reason, or at the very least, arguably one of the biggest reasons why Malaysia had successfully encapsulated such an industry was because of the consistent government initiatives. Back in the 1970s, their initial incentives and implemented policies to become an attractive destination was an enabler. An enabler that lured out Intel and other major multinational companies Companies. And even by the 1980s, they still continue to improve, implement, and to adapt the underlying industry by solving bottlenecks and implementing growth solutions. And today, the Malaysian government has become more persistent than ever in pushing out the best that it can to lure in more foreign investments. For instance, the Malaysian Investment Development Authority, the governmental agency responsible to oversee and drive investments into manufacturing and services, has been encouraging companies to establish establish research and development plants in centers of excellence, which will even help push the growth of human capital. This is also why Malaysia, a country that used to assemble and test, now has its own fabrication plants, which is proof that the country is immediately jumping from a low-value chain to a higher-value chain. But anyway, the rise of Malaysia's electrical and electronic industry has become a miracle journey that led companies such as Intel to join. Do you think that they will continue to invest heavily in the country? Or will they one day leave the country as, say, costs of labor or other unfathomable costs continue to grow? Let us know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching.